Okay, we're talking about atoms in this chapter, and we're going to start off by talking about the elements. Everything is made of atoms. Stars are made of atoms. The earth is made of atoms. The slice of pizza is made of atoms. You are made of atoms. Everything in the natural world is made of atoms. And they're really, really tiny. But they're sometimes called the building blocks of matter because all matter is made up of atoms. To get an idea of how small an atom is, we can make an analogy like this. Imagine a little tiny atom. So that dot right there represents an atom, although in reality an atom is much, much smaller than that dot. But imagine the dot and imagine an apple. So here, here's an apple. And think about how many atoms could fit inside the apple. Well, I'll tell you how many atoms can fit inside the apple. Think about the apple and think about the earth. Now, obviously, this is not to scale. The, the earth is, is huge compared to the, to the apple. But think about how many apples could actually fit inside the earth. A lot. If you've ever taken a trip anywhere, you know that you can drive and drive and drive for hours and only cover a tiny portion of the earth's surface. The earth is huge compared to an apple. Well, in the same way, an apple is huge compared to an atom. About the same number of atoms can fit inside an apple as apples could fit inside the earth. Now, that's not a completely accurate statement because there are different sizes of apples and there are different sizes of atoms too. But that is roughly a correct analogy. Approximately the same number of atoms could fit inside an apple as apples could fit inside the earth. So that gives you an idea, hopefully, of how small they are. We say that atoms are the building blocks of matter because atoms combine to form other things. And specifically, atoms combine to form molecules. And a good example that you're probably familiar with is water. Water is sometimes referred to as H2O. And what this means, the H stands for hydrogen. There's two hydrogen atoms. And the O stands for oxygen. There's one oxygen atom. And a H2O molecule or a water molecule looks something like this. There's an oxygen atom and two hydrogens bonded to it. And the oxygen atom is a good bit larger and the hydrogen atoms are small. And they're bonded in a specific configuration that looks something like that. That's a water molecule and it's made of atoms. There are over a hundred different types of atoms. Most of those occur naturally in the world. Some of them are, uh, occur only in a laboratory, have been manufactured in a laboratory and only exist for brief periods of time. They rapidly decay, but most of them occur naturally in the world. And the different types of atoms can be combined in different ways to form many, many different types of molecules. Now there are a lot more than a hundred different types of things in the world and a, more than a hundred different types of substances. And you might wonder how a relatively small number of atoms can be combined to form so many different things. Well a good way to think about that is to think about the letters in the alphabet. There are only 26 letters in the alphabet, but think about how many words can be formed from those 26 letters. Just a huge variety of words just arrange them in different ways. Well, in the same way, from a hundred different atoms, a huge variety of molecules, molecules can be formed just by arranging them in different ways. Some, some substances are made just from a single type of atom. For example, oxygen gas. Oxygen gas is made of oxygen molecules and an oxygen molecule is two oxygen atoms bonded together. So each of these things that I'm drawing would be called O2, and that stands for two oxygen. Two oxygen molecules bonded together, or, or excuse me, two oxygen atoms bonded together form an oxygen molecule. 
and a bunch of oxygen molecules together form oxygen gas. Oxygen is obviously part of the atmosphere along with nitrogen and carbon dioxide and other things and oxygen is important for us to live. Uh, and oxygen gas is exactly that, O2, two oxygen atoms, but there's nothing else. There's no, um, in, in pure oxygen gas, there's only oxygen. It's a single element. Graphite is another example. Graphite is pure carbon. Carbon atoms arranged in a particular way, and I'll draw them like this. And they're arranged in this specific structure where they're packed in real close together. Arranged this way, they, they form little hexagons in there. And, and graphite isn't really white like that. Graphite's actually kind of black or gray. Uh, graphite is used in pencils where they used to they used to call it pencil lead because the part of the pencil that makes the mark on the page it actually used to be lead uh, lead though is a, a harmful substance it accumulates in your body and if enough of it accumulates you, you get lead poisoning so they switched from using lead to using graphite but that's what they make pencil lead with although it's not really lead anymore another example of an element would be gold Gold, as you know, very expensive, very valuable. And gold atoms in a piece of gold are arranged a little bit differently. They're arranged in a lattice structure that's different from graphite. And it looks something like this in a more regular square pattern. You get these little squares formed in a lattice of gold atoms. But gold also can be found in a pure form, a pure elemental form gold as an element that is gold atoms and nothing else but those are just some examples of some pure elements that we find in the real world